Okay, so quite a while ago now, Cytron sent me this maker board, and this is really cool. It's for a compute module four, and it has loads and loads of connectivity on it, but I'll go through a bit of that later on, uh, and you can see the compute module four fits in there. And I quite like the way they've got a picture of it, so you can see exactly which the orientation is. But I haven't had a compute module four. The one I had went faulty, and I've had one on order for ages, and it never came through. Well, Cytron contacted me and they've sent me a Compute Module 4. And here it is. Uh, so if I clip it into this board, because I don't know if I uh, need to write an operating system this, because the other one I had was with a router in this video. There are some rubber feet which I could put on the bottom. I'm not going to at the moment, but I will probably later on. So let's plug it all in. We have a full-size HDMI, which is nice for a Pi. I've got USB-C here. So let's just make sure this is the right way so I can see how many watts it's using. Uh, mouse keyboard. Uh, four USB 2 sockets, but you only get USB 2 with the Compute Module 4. You don't get USB 3. Although I think, I think the router that I had before, there was a way that they got USB 3 on there. Anyway, I'll have a look at the specs later on. Uh, so that's probably enough to be able to switch it on. We have lots of lights, although it's a bit difficult to see in this uh, in this bright environment, but you can see various different LEDs have lit up. 1.2 watts at the moment. It's woken my display. And what have we got? Failed to open device NVMe. Boot mode network. So it looks like there isn't anything written to the EMMC drive. I might keep it like that because I quite like the idea, uh, like a Raspberry Pi 4, like the basic Orange Pi 5, that there is no operating system embedded in it. Uh, so I may keep it like that. Right, so let's switch it off. Attach the NVMe drive, which would have come, this is a Maker Disk one, again from Cytron. Uh, this would have come with Raspberry Pi OS pre-installed on it. The idea is that it's ready to go. Right, so switch on again. What do we reckon? 1.5, 1.8. Oh, and we got, we're booting up. Now this might not work because I've written Kali Linux to this be, uh, just because I was going through Raspberry Pi Imager and seeing what operating systems were on it. And I haven't tried Kali Linux for ages. So it's resizing, remounting. It looks like it is installing. But it did say in Kali Linux, uh, well it didn't mention Compute Module 4. It mentioned, I think, Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 4 and 400. I do really like the look of it. You can see there's a clock battery here, camera, display, various different GPIO bits which come off or they pop out. But we do have the standard GPIOs as well with these illuminations. Ah, here we go. Kali Linux has booted up. So I said earlier on that this build wasn't built for Compute Module 4 and the USBs don't work. Uh, and that's nothing to do with the board. It is because this operating system obviously just doesn't support it. Now, I've tried using USB-C uh, and I tried booting it with on the go, but it didn't like booting with on the go. Um, so I'm using a barrel jack now, thinking that maybe I can get the USB to work through there. But whatever I try, I can't get it to work with USB. So I'm gonna have to put Raspberry Pi OS on here and give that a try. I am a little intrigued by Kali Linux as I haven't tried it for ages, so I'm going to boot it up on this Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, you can see I'm using this Oracle adapter which is plugged into USB 3. So let's switch that on and see if it works fine on this. It should do. And mouse keyboard is working, so uh, I'm going to go with Kali and Kali. I think that's what it was last time I tried it. Yeah, that looks like it's working. Okay, so I definitely need to sort out the overscan, so let's start the terminal and do sudo nano boot config dot text and find the overscan disable overscan and control x and yes and enter and let's just reboot that yeah that's much better so as well as having loads of network tools in here like information gathering vulnerability analysis web application analysis, loads and loads of things on there. One of the cool things I've always liked about it is, is it under settings? Here it is, Kali undercover mode. So you can see it looks like Linux at the moment with a big Kali Linux bit on it. But if you click on this, it will change the operating system 
to look like Windows 10. And it does a really good job of it. I'm surprised they haven't switched to Windows 11 now. But as you can see, all the icons and everything start to switch to Windows 10. Even the folders and things like that all look very much like Windows 10. So it looks like any other computer, but you've got all this hacking side uh, all at your disposal. Okay, let's get back to the carrier board. And I'm going to write Raspberry Pi OS to the NVMe drive. And let's go for the full version. This one here, the 32-bit version, usually adds better support for the maker side. So I think it's going to be the most compatible with that board. Okay, so that's all booted up and mouse keyboard is working fine. So I can press the Windows key and uh, say, for instance, start typing Chromium and all that works. Uh, and if I do Control-Alt-T, I can get the terminal up and just use NeoFetch to show Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 Revision 1. And this is the 2 gig model. Uh, running at 1.5 gigahertz, not the 1.8 that you would get on a Raspberry Pi 4. That's interesting. So let's do a speed test on the NVMe drive because this is a faster interface than you can get uh, as the USB 3 on a Raspberry Pi 4. So if I start typing in diagnostics, you can see Raspberry Pi diagnostics comes up. And let's hit run test and show log. Now I'll do this three times. Okay, so the best random read speed was the top one. So let's take the others and delete them. And let's compare that with some of the previous speed tests I've done on Raspberry Pi 4. So let's have a look. Actually, if I do NVMe, because there was an NVMe adapter for Raspberry Pi 4, which is this one. Different drive. This drives in my son's computer because I couldn't get it to work on the Raspberry Pi 4 after a while. Okay, for some reason I didn't put the speed test, uh, this was a long time ago, uh, in the video, but it is it's definitely here somewhere. Okay, so let's zoom into that a little bit and call back up the text. So sequential write speed on this Compute Module 4 in the Maker board, 383,251 versus 324,435. Random write speed uh, was uh, 29,952 versus 20,978 and random read speed 31,207 or round about double uh, versus 15,588. So the fact that we've been able to add an NVMe drive directly as opposed to going through a USB adapter definitely works well. So this is the fastest speed test I've had on a Raspberry Pi. So that's definitely one good reason for getting a Compute Module 4 with a Maker board. But obviously there's also the Maker side of it. Uh, so let's have a look at Cytron's site. And there's all sorts of guides in here. It's nicely done down here, getting started with Maker board. And we've got things like, uh, so here, look, Lesson 2, Buzzer and Buttons. Uh, because there are some buttons on here which make sounds. And there is a little tiny speaker. So we, you can see the code is all here, so we can copy that. We can open up Thony, I always forget you have to double click, and right click and paste that in, and then just hit run. And the buttons, which are here, uh, and they can be assigned to all sorts of things, <laughs> have different sounds. And you can see on the screen here, it shows which button was pushed. And if we have a look at the code, yeah, there's tone value here. So we can change this. So 2000, 1000, and 3000. So let's try changing that to really low. 100, let's give that a go. So stop and run again. Don't know which button it is. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay, didn't like that. Uh, frequency must be greater than 0, 0.0. Okay, so it shows my coding skills. I've managed to make it stop working. So what can we do? We can go with 500, stop that, and hit run again. And yeah, still doesn't like it. But you get the idea. You can play around with it and, uh, and experiment and see what changes you can make to improve things. Uh, there's also the audio jack. So at the moment, the audio jack isn't working. The HDMI audio output is working. So if I go to the audio output here, 
uh, you can see that it doesn't give me any other options than HDMI, but we can enable the audio jack and it's just this bit here. So let's copy that and paste it into a terminal and reboot to take effect. So now if I right click and select AV jack, that should come out of the three and a half mil jack. But it does say that uh, the little speaker is attached to the analog jack. So I just want to see what happens if I just try and play some sound. Oh, it does. So this is the little speaker. I'll get close to it. Okay, but at least there's some sound that you can use. Obviously it works better for higher pitch things. And because it shares that audio output, you can turn off the little speaker. You can see there's a little speaker off switch here. There you go, that's switched off now. Everything's so nice and clearly labeled. It's small, but obviously it's a small board. But if I plug in my Bluetooth speaker, now I'm getting some sound coming through my speaker through the three and a half mil audio jack. I've just plugged in a different power adapter and this is a 12 volt, two amp. You can see on here, it says it will go from seven volts to 18 volts, positive center. And this will allow it to basically be able to have more power. So my official Raspberry Pi adapter would only give me about 18 watts. This will give me around about 24 watts. So two amps at 12 volts. I'm sure I've got a three amp 12 volt as well. So if I calculate that, you can see I could get up to 36 watts on a different power supply. So really impressed with this maker board that Cytron has sent me and really impressed with the connectivity on it. So let's just scroll down. There is a big list if you wanna go through all the specs of what's included uh, and it's all itemized and everything here, but there's some key features. So wide range of input voltage. Uh, so we've got seven to 18 volt in the barrel jack and we've also got the USB-C five volt socket as well. There's a power button option uh, and there's a tutorial on how to enable this. So you can basically just use the button to power off the device, but you have to press the two buttons at the same time so you don't accidentally do it. Micro SD slot, it says for CM4 Lite, but as I've got no OS on my CM4, I'm sure it will boot from that. Uh, M.2 support is great, lovely and fast. Gigabit Ethernet, four USB 2s, full-size HDMI, so we've got a camera port and also a display output, the analog jack I've covered, the GPIO pins, the boot switch, so you can load an OS onto the EMMC drive. I don't think I'll bother putting anything on it. It's only a 16 gig drive anyway, and much better to use an NVMe. So you can see here, provide real-time clock for application without internet connection, no driver is needed. GPIO status LEDs, the three customizable buttons that I was using earlier on, the little inbuilt piezo buzzer, which I was calling a speaker, five Grove ports, and all the pinout diagram and everything is there, but it is actually labeled really well on the board itself. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.